Yo, yo, yo. Probably gonna be my last video for the day, but <laughs> hey, I, I was asked a good question, uh, you know, because uh, someone who really wanted to know, who really wanted to know about the breed and everything like that, was asking me, what do we, what did we used to do to get the dogs bullier? And what he meant was, you know, in a time where we had a lot of more terrier type dogs, how were we adding the size? How were we doing this? And it was funny because a lot of our breedings was this weird premise of what we would do is we would take a bigger dog to a smaller dog. You know what I mean? And um, and you were always looking for features, you know, just features, features, features. But, you know, when we wanted a more compact dog, that was our theory. You know, we would take a dad, basically an XL and breed that XL to a more compact, you know, smaller, shorter, stockier type of bully and see what we get. And a lot of times, especially like with Little Row, that stuff worked out. Now, keep in mind, Little Row was still a 17-inch dog, but that just tells you the size of those dogs. But a lot of the stuff was just selective breeding. You know, back then, you know, uh, you damn near were puppy mill because you would have so many dogs. I mean, so many breedings just to get one dog, you know? And uh, basically, you were just taking like one dog out of every breed. And that's why it's like these conspiracy theories are like, well, where's all the litter mates at off of the old dogs? Why doesn't this dog have no litter mates? Why the, they had litter mates, but they look like pit bulls, you know? That's, it's just that simple. Like, you know, some of the stuff you would think, like you would see um, a super, super bully dog, and you would think, oh, I wonder what his brothers look like, or I wonder what his sister, they look like pit bulls. This is the, <laughs> this is serious. This is why you see a lot of the, like, the older dogs, you know, and they don't have siblings. They actually did have siblings, but they just weren't a representation of what we were looking for as American bullies, and that's where the selective part came in, and it, what, the way the progress was supposed to go is that the more we collected the genes that the dogs look bullier and thicker and, you know, and more towards what we want and kept combining and co compounding those genes that we would produce more of those dogs. And uh, somewhere in the process, of course, people decided I'm just going to skip all that shit and throw me a bulldog in here. So some of the dogs got bulldog in them now. But, you know, the old school process was just that, you know, waited out. You know, a lot of times we would take, the, like I say, the bigger dogs to the to the uh, shorter dogs. And hopefully, you know, we was hoping for puppies that would carry the bigger dog's size and girth, but was actually shorter. And it happened a lot of times. A lot of times it didn't, you know, but we would take those ones and we would push forward with them. And uh, <clears throat> it's all about selective breeding. And it's the same thing that we have to do now in cleaning up the breed. You know, in some aspects going in reverse to where we have to, you know, breed cleaner dogs to cleaner dogs to try to wipe away some of the junk that's behind their genetics. Uh, it'll happen, but it, it's going to take time. It's going to take dedication, you know. Uh, the Back then, it would, take, it would take a lot of time and dedication. It would take a lot of... Uh, sometimes even perseverance because you would have to find homes for these not so great puppies you know and we we did we weren't big believers in taking all the dogs and dumping them off at the pile so you 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 would be surprised if you go through some of these areas some of the dogs that you've seen like damn man that dog is brother to such and such yeah it's just the way it happened but it was a patience game and you have to remember at the very foundation of these dogs like especially the good ones it still is that that uh that pit bull and that staffy if you breed towards that, you'll get a better version of, you know what I mean, of the dogs that we have. If you breed away from the bulldog genes, it'll tighten up, you'll keep the muscle, you'll keep the size, you know, but you just have to keep on picking your cleaner, healthier dogs and, you know, and going with that. If you decide that you wanna add like, you know, like some of us just always think that it's the bulldog that you gotta add size. No, you got big ass dogs and that are clean American bullies that you can breed to your shorter dogs to add the size also. This is something that we have to take into consideration. You know, it's, it's more than one way to do this thing. You know, you can keep your clean look, you can keep your true American bully look and all of that. You just have to have some patience because sometimes, like say for instance, if you do take an XL and you take that XL to a more uh, pocket dog, you know, you're gonna get some mitch and match. You might get a lot of XLs, you might get a lot of pockets, but through there you're gonna siphon and you're gonna find the one that you want. Hopefully you have a good contingency plan to where you you can place the puppies to where you need you need them to be. And, uh, ooh, excuse me, you know, that, that'll work out. But truly right now, because of the amount of dogs that are out there that carry these characteristics, you don't have to do that. You might have to slightly do it, like find a slightly bigger dog 
and uh, you know what I'm saying, and put it to your dog and just try to compress those jeans that way and add the size that way. But you don't have to go with a straight bulldog. I keep telling people this and they never want to listen. Some of the things that we've done or throughout the years at Hall of Fame has not been a magic trick. It's just been learning from past mistakes and past success. But you know, no matter what you're doing, play with the genetics in a way that's going towards the, the absolute look. So whatever you're doing, don't add the flaws in, you know? You can take a bigger dog to a smaller dog and come up with a stockier, you know, type of dog. But don't flat out go with a bulldog, you know what I mean? Because now you're gonna have a whole separate problem. You're gonna have, you know, the wrinkles to deal with and whatever other issues come with combining those two genetics, where sometimes even if it's a nice bulldog, by mixing breeds like that, you come up with other issues that weren't there in the first place. But, um, you know, it, like I say, it's many ways to play with the genetics. Uh, you know, if you got a smaller dog and you feel like he needs some size, pick a good big dog with some size and, you know, and go from there. You know, be smart through your litter. Look, you know, look for the puppy that fits what you think that you that you want and hopefully develop. You know, if you if you want them people who got, you know, resources that you can keep all the puppies and you know watch them grow and watch how they're developing that's even better because you get to see who's really doing what and you get a chance to pick the right puppy but make sure that in this process of, of adding the size and the girth to the dog with the with the bigger dogs don't cross the line to go into something that's going to cause you a lot of trouble down the road all right man it's been a blessing uh, the videos will get better. It's, it's good to just get back to doing this because uh, I really couldn't talk well for, for a while. Imagine that. But uh, everything's getting better, man, and we're going to get on the roll and do what we do. Until next time, y'all, God bless.